Welcome to class, and I'm glad you made it. We're going to talk about cars today. Getting cars, fixing cars, even wrecking cars. Now, in normal times, you just go down to the dealer and buy yourself a car. But this ain't normal times, so we're going to teach you how to get cars in a couple of ways. If you're a professional burglar, just hop in a car, hotwire it, and if it's not a piece of junk or out of gas, then you're good to go. Now, if you ain't a professional burglar, but you've got two levels in your mechanic skill and one in your electrical, you can do the exact same thing as your professional burglars. Hit the hot wire, and you're on the way. Sparing that, you're stuck scrounging keys, and you can find them anywhere. In the glove box, the parking lot, even in cabinets in nearby buildings. Now you got a key or a hot wired car, and it's in decent condition, but it's got no gas. But no worries. Grab a gas can or an empty bottle, find another car and siphon that baby. Put it into your car and you're cooking with gas. Or driving with gas. Whatever. You, you know what I mean. Now if a car is completely totaled, it ain't going anywhere. And we'll get back to what to do with it later. Now that we got a working car, you can back that sweet ride up to another car. Hop out, hit V, and bam. We can now tow it with us. This also works on trailers. Now once you get your car back to your garage of choice, we're gonna have to get some tools to work with. Hop on down to the chop shop, you know the one. Run on in and grab yourselves the following tools. You're gonna need a wrench, a screwdriver, a jack, a lug wrench. No, this is different from a regular wrench and you're gonna need both. And lastly, you're gonna need yourself a tire pump. And if you can find a car battery charger, That'll help as well. And you might grab any of these spare parts here or any others that you find. But we're going to be chopping up a bunch of cars, so don't worry too much. Unless they're engine parts, but we'll get to that later. Now there's three classes of cars. You got your standards. These fellas here. Boring, everyday, working man's cars. Then you got your souped up hot rods. These fellas right here. And you got your commercial vehicles. These are your box vans, your trucks. If it looks like it might be a diesel, then it's probably a commercial vehicle. Now all three classes of cars have their own magazines that you need to read before you can work on them. Look, I don't make the rules, but them's the rules. And just a side note, trailers like these guys, they are considered standard. And every car can tow them, not just commercial vehicles. Last section on materials, I promise. These will help fix various parts on the cars. A welding mask, a propane torch and spare tanks, a regular and small metal sheets, screws, glue, and duct tape. And read your skill books, nerd. Now that we got our workshop stocked with tools and materials, we can get down to business. First things first, pick yourself a car that you're not dependent on. Don't do this to your ride that you need to survive with. Park it in your workshop and pop the hood open like this. This screen here? This is the condition of all the parts in the car. Ones that are missing, their status, and so on. Simply right click on them to interact with them. All you need to do to level up mechanics is to uninstall and reinstall parts. To start off, the only ones that you can really do safely is going to be the radio and the battery. So Jim, I just repeat this forever to get the level 10 mechanics? No, you bumpkin. Now that car, specifically those parts, are on a 24 hour cooldown before they will give experience again. Both uninstalling and reinstalling have their own cooldown, and each part has its own cooldown. So, the easiest way to grind? Get more cars. A lot more cars. And maybe you can eventually get some of these running. Now, once you've got some experience and have been taken out more than just the radio and battery, and you have been, right? Because you leveled up and new parts are safe to remove, we need to talk about Vulture and parts. Sometimes a car will have particularly good condition parts. Some brakes here, suspensions there, whatever. I like to stick these to the side. There's only so many hours in a day, and eventually you won't be able to work on every car every day. So don't sweat it too much and save the good ones. Now remember that welding setup? We can use that to repair parts of the car, like the hood. If you regularly hit your neighbors with your car, your hood is going to get damaged. Break your hood, and the engine is going to start taking it on the chin. 
and it's a lot bigger pain in the butt to fix your engine than it is just to weld your hood up back to a reasonable condition. If you have a broken lock on your trunk or on your door, simply replace the door or the trunk lid. As far as I know, you can't actually replace a trunk at this point, but hopefully in the future, we'll be able to do so. Now, we've covered the basics, and I think you get it. If you can't replace a part, you can probably fix it with one of the tools and materials that we've covered. That is, except the engine. And it makes sense, right? It's easier to fix a broken bone than to do open heart surgery. So grab a wrench and some other tools and a car that's running and uh, that you maybe haven't been experimenting on. And you remember when I said we would get back to those wrecked cars? These can be the perfect targets for extracting engine parts, if there's enough engine condition left. But even if there's not, you can still usually scavenge a few good parts on them. Since we're not going to take this car back to the shop, we'll just take its engine parts instead. And it's pretty easy. Pop the hood, right click, and take the engine parts. Based on its condition, we'll kind of determine how many parts you get. In this case, we got ourselves 12. All of this to pursue the perfect car. Now remember, you're going to need 5 mechanic levels to extract engine parts from all types of cars, but standards only need 4. Another aside, once your heater's shot, it's done forever. Sorry about that, we just ain't invented new heaters yet. A few more things to note. First, our hotkeys. I'm just going to stick them on the screen for you. You can also use the radial dial which you can open with the V key, and this is very convenient and it's what I generally use. Now let's talk about the dash. This is your cruise control, which I just wouldn't use. This is your current gear, your engine status, your battery status, and whether your doors are locked. This is your RPM, which can show engine damage, your fuel gauge, uh, your headlights, your heater, your trunk, whether it's locked or not, your current speed, and of course, whether you've got a key in or a hot wire. Basically, if it's green, you're good, and if it's red, you're not good. Two more things. First, look at this graph. Please hit the subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Second, gas is going to be a constant need, not only for your cars, but your generators too. So either build a sky bridge to a gas station, or base it one, or just keep it secure or something. I put a spare generator here, and I only turn it on when I really need it. And if it's really far from home, and you do build a sky bridge, I would build a little room up here with some water and a bed, just in case you get kind of stranded. I also would consider putting a box with some spare supplies. Also, don't forget to turn off your generator before you leave or you're going to have a whole bunch of neighbors coming to your yard. If this guide helped you out, consider liking the video and make sure that you hug somebody that you love today because you never know what tomorrow will bring. Take care.